Hey everyone, it's Corey Michelle here, and I have a really, I think, pretty awesome topic to talk, talk about today, and that is what the F is going on when what you're asking for is either turning up as shit or just not showing up at all. So I'm actually going to do a little bit more of a presentation style today. And i um, really going to show you guys some of the ins and outs of what hap what's actually going on when you're asking the universe uh, for whatever you're asking for and it's not showing up. So all in the vein of asking you shall receive to create your life because that's mostly what I teach on. It's mostly what I facilitate on. So what is going on when you're asking but nothing's showing up or shit is showing up, okay? So it's always interesting to me to really look at, you know, what are we sabotaging ourselves with? What are we, um, how are we making our own magic not work? Because it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of contraction to not have what's natural for us actually work. So the first, first things first, look at your life right now and look to see, number one, are you asking for what you would like? That's first things first, okay? Or are you concluding that things should be a certain way? Or because you read a book, or because you did, 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 did this stuff, then it should be different, right? Are you in one of those two areas where you're not really asking and just should be, or you think because you did a lot, then whatever you want to show up as your life should, okay? So, are you in either one of those places and do you have anything like that going on in your world? Do you have any expectations of how life should be versus the question of, hey, universe, what would it take for me to be living this kind of life? Okay. All right. <laughs> so if you're not asking or if you're in expectation or if you're um, doing, 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 doing to have everything show up and things aren't showing up, if it's not working, then you're actually creating a place for you to sabotage yourself because you're not asking, right? And really all you have to do is start asking questions um, like, what would it take for me to be living this kind of life? What would it take for me to have this in my life? What would it take for this to show up? Literally a basic question, what would it take to have whatever. Basics of ask and you shall receive 101, right? Now, we sabotage ourselves in lots and lots of different ways, but what it comes down to is are you actually clear about what it is you'd like to have as your life? Okay, now notice how I'm saying uh, not what the things you would like to have in your life. What would you like to have be your life? life. And B is the energy, which is totally different than having a whole bunch of conclusions about what is in your life. Because the what don't always give us the satisfaction, the joy, the delight in life when those things show up. Okay. It's the energy that actually fuels the, um, like the, 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 the like joy of embodiment right? The, the thrive for living, right? The uh, aliveness is the energy. It's not the thing. That's why so many times people get married. For example, they find the love of their life. And then after they get married, they have their dream wedding or whatever. And then after that, everything just kind of goes meh. And you get into routines and you get into ruts and then you're not choosing for you. And then you're compromising and sacrificing and, blah, and all of a sudden, 20 years later, you're like, ah, how did I get here? Right? And it's because we come to the conclusion that it's the thing that we think we want versus the energy of our whole entire life. Okay? So if we're uh, misidentifying those things, then we will uh, look for the thing, look for the doing, expect versus really go, what would actually make my life worth living? Okay? Rebecca says, uh, what about when you ask for things and something shows up on a small scale? I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Sabotage part sounds remarkably like me. It sounds like a lot of people. Hi, everybody. I can see you now. For some reason, I couldn't see you before. So here's the thing. 
if you're not asking. That's one place we sabotage ourselves. Another place we sabotage ourselves is um, when we don't actually know what we'd like to have, what we'd like to have our life be like, okay? And so many people are out there teaching all sorts of different things and like, find your purpose. And then we go, oh, I don't know what my person's purpose is. So I don't know what I want my life to be like, right? So we screw ourselves there and looking for the answer. Um, we think that the things, like I just said, things are going to make us happy. If only I had more money. If only I had the guy. If only I, whatever, right? If you find yourself pining, which is going over and over and over on a particular thing, then you might want to come off that thing and actually look at the energy that you would like because it's not about the guy, it's not about the girl, it's not about the car, it's not about the house, it's not about any of that, it's all about the energy. So we're misidentifying what it is that we're actually like really juiced up by. Colleen says, I never know what I want. Right, okay, so those of us who are in this unicorn, basically, we're magical, we're humanoids, we're like in this space of anything is possible, then a lot of times we don't know what you want because so many people teach you to go for the thing, right? And instead of the actual energy of it, like we're talking about. So I actually started uh, my entrepreneur days in um, the multi-level marketing world for a nutrition company. And what they all said on stage with every event I ever went to, every video I ever watched was figure out your why. And I was always like watching their whys and going, okay, well, this, these people have family. So it's like my why is to, you know, create a life for me and my kids and my husband or whatever. And somebody else's why was I want to retire my husband. And somebody else's why was something else. And it was like all really external things to accomplish that never motivated me personally. I never could find my why. I was like, I don't, okay, that would all be nice. Yeah, I'd like to have money. Yeah, I'd like to have freedom. Yeah, I'd like to not work, but those aren't like why I'd like to do this. My why wasn't a why at all. It was because I actually knew something else was possible for me, right? And so where have you misidentified like finding something to want, like a conclusion versus allowing the energy <laughs> of the life you would like to have to be present, right? And verse, and, and, and more in the, what I found for myself of like, what would it be like if I loved what I did in because I'm really great at it, right? Because what I get to do in the world or for my daily life is fun for me, right? What if that's your why? <laughs> <laughs> or something light like that. So Susan says, I just want to be happy. Well, luckily, happiness is a choice. So no matter if you're in a prison cell or you have a billion dollars, you can choose to be happy or not. Yep. So Marion says, what if we didn't have a purpose or a mission? Those words actually make me want to hurl. Right. Because purpose actually confines you to, and limits you to... Um, uh, like uh, some conclusion on what you are here to do in this lifetime. Now, some of us created purposes from before we came in this lifetime of like, this is my purpose for the life. And some people actually promote figuring out your purpose. And it's actually just a conclusion, which is a limitation, which is why it might make you want to hurl. And a mission is kind of the same thing too. If you don't know what you would like your life to be like, be, 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 be being the keyword. Be like, be like, not do, not look, not feel, be, be, be. Did I say that enough times? Be like. Repeat after me. What would I like my life to be like? Okay. These are the energies, the energies of your life. The universe responds to energetic language, not um, your intentions. Your intentions, you guys, uh, <laughs> intentions are conclusions about what you think can't happen. So you think you need to intend in order to create something. But all you're doing is you're slapping something uh, on top of your awareness and then intending, so you're trying to go intention and force something into existence. And the universe a lot of times has greater plans for you than your intentions because your intentions are judgments, conclusions, projections, expectations, 
and separation. How does it get better than that? So uh, you might want to look at maybe asking what's possible versus my intention is to blah, 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 okay? Now, uh, one other area, so it, knowing what you want your life to be like, okay? Uh, so many of us don't know what we freaking want our lives to be like. And if you start asking for those energies, hey, universe body, show me those energies that light me up, that expand me, that are generative for me, that contribute to me, okay? Show me those energies. And you may have words for those energies and you may not have words for those energies, but show me what those energies are, okay? And if your whole life was those energies, it wouldn't freaking matter what showed up, okay? It wouldn't matter if it was a Lamborghini, or if it was a Lexus, or if it was a pair of Jimmy shoes, or if it was some other pair of amazing shoes that your feet loved. It wouldn't matter if it was a billion dollars or a million dollars, because the whole energy of your whole entire life was that of a life where you're like, I freaking love my life, okay? Now, this is one that people have a hard time coming off of because they just so badly want the conclusions and the attachments to what you think you want. And I hear a lot from people two things, money and men, because mostly I have women around, okay? Money and men. If I only had the money, then my life would be better. If I only had the money, then I would have more choices. If I only had the money, then I would be happy. If I only had the money, then I wouldn't be so fucked up, okay? And then men, so many women have this conclusion that if you just had the man, if you just had the perfect partner, if you had your soulmate, if you had your twin flame, if you had whatever that is for your guy, then you'd be able to live your life. And that's not how it works. Okay, those guys and women, they show up when you're actually being the energy already. When you're already resonant is when that uh, sort of partner can get, to, can show up in your world. Okay, it's not an if I had this then or when I have this then, it's a be it now, okay? So start, you can write down and start looking at, you know, what energies would you like your life to be like, okay? Conflictual priorities. Now, this is the next piece, is if what you're asking for isn't showing up or is showing up as crap, then you might have a conflictual priority in there. Now, these things are not widely talked about, yet will run your entire life. Now, what is a conflictual priority? So this is a conflictual priority when you say one thing and something totally different shows up in your world. Oh, actually that's not true. When you take a different action than what is congruent with what you're asking for. Now, as we know, when we ask, the universe will show us um, things that are totally out of our imagination, right? Somebody posted in the Crazy Possible um, uh, experiment group yesterday and they said, or maybe it was this morning, they said, uh, I asked for a cure for my dog, and then my dog died. And I was like, wow, well, I'm sorry about your puppy because that's not really fun at all. And you asked for a cure to whatever's going on, and that is one of the possibilities that's available. And how cool is it that it actually showed up? Now, it's not so fun that it's our puppy, and then, you know, we don't get to have that that being in our world as it was anymore. However, you did ask, and it did show up. Now we can't control what shows up when we're in the space of asking you shall receive. Because this is where when you trust that that was actually the thing to show up, and, and also when a being dies or passes on, whatever you wanna call it, then that's their choice, whether it's a dog or whether it's a person or whatever. So it's like, what would it be like if you actually trusted that um, when you ask, you will receive, okay? Now, let's talk about talking out of both sides of your mouth. You say, I'd like to have money, then you don't actually do anything about it. Conflictual priorities, okay? You say, my priority is having money, but what you choose is not to take any actions that will create any money. 
not to ask any questions that will create money. And maybe you choose instead to go into the wrongness of you because you don't have money. <laughs> that would be conflictual priorities, okay? So conflictual priorities literally are underneath the surface and they will run your life. And this is one of the um, main areas that people see that they like can't get like traction in creating their life is because they've got these conflictual priorities underneath. It's kind of like saying, oh, I would like to feel really great and have a happy body, yet we choose to eat foods that our body doesn't like, or we choose to um, stay up later than our body is telling us, or we choose to hang out with people that our body's like, no, I don't wanna hang out with this person, right? Or we choose something else, or we say we'd like to have a happy body and it says, dance, come on, let's dance. And you're like, no, I'm not gonna dance. Right? So you're not actually following the choices, the awarenesses that you're receiving. When you ask, when you say, I would like to have this, you're not actually following your awareness on those things. Right? You're actually choosing something that's in a conflict to what you're asking for. Have you ever known anybody right, who says, I want to quit smoking, and then they start smoking? And you're like, wait a second, you just said you wanted to quit smoking, yet you just pulled out another cigarette. What is that? Conflictual priorities. If you have conflictual priorities, you will either not create what you're asking for or you'll create a bunch of shit. Why? Why is this? Why do you create shit when you have these conflictual priorities? Because the message that you're sending to the universe is mixed. It's mixed up. So the universe doesn't know what to give you. The universe is like, well, you say you want to quit, but you keep smoking. I don't know what to give you. So it'll just give you some other jumbled like thing, right? But when you're really clear, and you're like, no, universe, I wanna quit smoking. All right, what's it gonna take for me to quit smoking? By the way, I don't smoke, but what's it gonna take for me to quit smoking, right? And then you get an awareness to get on the supplement, or you get an awareness to throw all your cigarettes away, or you get an awareness to get your bars run, or you get an awareness to go get hypnotized. Right? And then you choose it because you're like, no, I am committed to whatever it is that I would like to have as my life. Okay? <laughs> so these are the things we're going to go over. And I know commitment, oh my God, commitment is like one of the worst um, uh, words for humanoids. One of the worst words. Because <laughs> we don't want to be committed to anything. But when you're not committed to you and the life that you would like to have, you'll function from these conflictual priorities and not actually have what you would really like to have, right? So you may like talk a lot about, oh, I'm creating possibilities, whatever, but then you don't choose any of them, right? You might say, uh, somebody said to me um, the other day, they said, I don't, Corey, what am I doing? Like, I choose this, I wanna go to this class, but the money's not showing up. Okay, great, then you're not actually choosing it. You're pretending like you're choosing it by saying, oh, I'm choosing it. But that doesn't mean you're choosing it. Just because you give it lip service doesn't actually mean you're choosing it. Choosing it would actually be like, okay, I need two grand to go to this class. What's it gonna take? I will do whatever it takes to get to that class. That's more in the energy of choosing it. And then you go, okay, cool, what do I need to do? Stand on the corner and beg for money? What do I need to do? Sell my couch? What do I need to do? Offer another program? What do I need to do? Go get a job? What do I need to do here? I want that, I'm having it, okay? That's the energy of being congruent with what you're asking for, okay? So, just to reiterate, if you're not congruent with what you're asking for, you'll create all sorts of poop pies everywhere, okay? Now, how do you know something's a poop pie versus something showing up differently than you asked for? All you have to do is ask. Hey, is this what I asked for? Showing up differently than I ever could have imagined. And if you get a light, that's a yes. Might not be a poop pie, it might just be what you asked for, but totally different. And the truth is, everything that shows up is what you are, uh, energetically resonant with. Now, how do you change your resonance? You start being congruent with everything that you're asking for, everything. And for some people, that's like the hardest thing to actually look at. 
And why is that? Lots of reasons. There's lots of energetic ties in there. There's lots of um, places where we want to um, still stay small or be just like uh, be just like everybody else or we think it's going to be too hard or we don't want to be seen because we're hiding our magic. All sorts of reasons, right? But when you get congruent, that's when the universe just literally starts showing you this and this and this and this where that sense of magic, that flow is possible. Now, some people, somebody emailed me earlier and said, Corey, I'm creating the little things, but how do I actually create the big stuff? Well, we're gonna talk about that on Sunday in the web class, um, but I'll give you a little taster of it. First of all, there is no difference between the little things and the big things except for your point of view. It's the only difference is that you have some judgment about what is little and what is big and that you can't have the big or it's going to be harder or it's more or it's whatever and the little is easy that you can have the little okay so i wonder what it would be like if you didn't have any separation and it was all available to you yeah because one of the things that most people have don't even have in their awareness that they're not receiving is their awareness their awareness of what choices to make because every single choice you make opens up a whole new set of possibilities. But when you're waiting, when you're having these conflictual universes, when you don't even know what to ask for, you're not asking a question or you're in conclusion, those things, can't, you can't even see them. You can't even perceive them. You can't receive them. You can't receive the awarenesses that'll actually create what you're asking for when you're in those spaces, okay? so. Conflictual priorities.